Oh, you did it. With no remorse. I'm gonna show you guys how you're gonna do it at home when you do this. How do you know when that glue is ready to go? Practice good nut discipline. He's gonna no! poop. He's gonna poop. <laughs> He's, it's like a freaking soft taco with a hole in it. Today is the day. We're finally pulling the 4L60 out of Uncle Rob. And also the first thing that'll ever be on this lift here, which is pretty freaking sweet. But before that, I have to uh, get the freaking exhaust and drive shaft carnage out of the bottom of the Monte Carlo so it's easy to push because man it gets, it gets hung up on everything it doesn't like dragging on the floor so I'm just gonna stop messing around and rip it out um, gotta put the car right here so the Escalade can roll back forward um, kind of where the Monte Carlo is right now and then we can start Uncle Rob because that over there is workspace foot traffic area, not car parking. So it can't stay that way. And I've never actually been under this car since uh, we chunked the freaking back of the transmission off. Go check that video out if you haven't seen it already. Um, it was from February 3rd or 4th, I believe. Go to the uh, Ralph Monte Carlo playlist and you can find it there. Now this is not the point of the video, so we're not gonna spend a ton of time on it. But I figured I'd give you guys a peek of what's going on under here because this is the first time I've seen it too. Oh my god. That's so bad. Wow. Yeah, that's not good. Oh well, get this thing back on the ground. Push it over. Uh, Logan is cleaning up um, some dog poop right now. Ruger pooped in his diaper. So, yeah, she'll be here in a little bit. Hey, don't go anywhere. A oh, diaper's falling off. Here you go. Good boy. Why does he have a diaper? Well, he was a little constipated. So you have to give him stuff to poop. Well, then he can't really control when he poops. So he just, you know, blows it everywhere. <laughs> his dick slipped. His dick <laughs> fell out. Oh no, put his dick back. Put your clothes on. Keep your dick in your pants, damn it. <laughs> Everything's moved. Uh, I'm just putting a couple ladders back because that is uh, those guys' ladders. We borrow stuff from them. You gotta put it back. And that's where that music comes from. If you're wondering why it sounds like mariachi music sometimes in the faint background of my videos, it's those guys working over there. There's nothing I can do about it. So, yeah. I'm gonna carry that back over there. Then we'll get Uncle Rob put on the lift for its maiden hoistage. Are you excited? I'm so excited. I feel like your mood is a little bit... Um, dampened by what you just had to do. Yep. I just wiped ass for like 30 minutes. No big deal. <laughs> Would you rather wipe ass or pull turds? I don't know. It depends how long the sh sat on his fur. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no one can question your commitment, that's for sure. Yeah. The consistency of that one was bad. Was it peanut butter or worse? It was sticking to his fur, it wouldn't come off. <laughs> well, we got about 30 seconds of wrenching content before two minutes of dog poop talk. So now let's actually do some work. First thing I notice here is how wide this thing is. Now, if you watch the lift install video, which you should go watch if you want to see it, um, there's a narrow and a wide configuration. We set it up for wide because everything we work on is like trucks and even just getting in and out of doors like I'm a big person I need more room to get in and out I didn't have any problem getting out of this thing see, see how much you can open the door before it hits it lots of room definitely way more room than they have on those lifts over there and maybe the asymmetricalness helps with that because it is kind of tilted that way with the way the door opens um, if you're wondering this is a Benpack XPR 10AS lift straight out of Summit Racing Equipment. But now uh, we can get to finagle the arms under there. We're not gonna pick it up the whole way anyway right off the bat, we're gonna pick it up just until the wheels come off the ground and then put it down. Do that a bunch of times to cycle it in so the arms stop jumping, just get air out of the system. Where'd the dick go? I washed it. I know, but you know, everybody bitching at me about drawing a dick on there, where the f is it? I don't know, actually. Blended into all the other scratches, probably. I don't know. Yeah. Can you still read where you wrote suck it on the bumper? I don't think so. I don't think you can. I think it blends in pretty well. Yeah, no, it's, uh, it's scratched up enough that you can't really tell. How about that? Sorry, Bob. Oh, we got it picked up. No problems. I don't know. We'll go a little higher just because we like to live life on the edge. <laughs> 
see if it bounces when it goes down. Fun stuff. I think we're gonna do this a few more times before we put it up for real. Just to be sure, just because we're supposed to do. And the cap is off so it can bleed properly. So the system's bled, looks pretty good. And worth noting that I can put this all the way up as high as it will go and the roof does not hit the top. It is impossible to hit the top, it doesn't go high enough. Maybe if it was like a work van or something, it might go high enough to hit that, but my Suburbans are safe. Um, put it all the way up, then it went down about another two inches to sit on the locks because I'm letting it sit on the locks. First order of business, get the drive shaft out. Although I feel like we could have driven, you know, like another 30 miles and it probably would have fallen out on its own. God dang, this is disgusting. Ew. Yeah, it's not that pretty under here. Not at all. Wow. Blah. 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 It's yucky. I am so glad I have Texas trucks. My Duramax is a Texas truck. Yeah, I even had that when I lived in Pennsylvania, which is kind of funny. Um, I sought out Texas trucks, and now I am Texas man. Are you ready to do stuff? Yes, I'm ready. Okay, cool. Let's pull this drive shaft out. Yeah, you can tell this drive shaft has never, ever, ever been taken out before. Ever. Those bolts were not easy to get out, but I got them. Uh, this thing's gonna be wedged in there real nice. My enthusiasm for working on this thing is going to be squashed very quickly. Rusticles. But <clears throat> the bright side, the more things we work on with this, the less of this we deal with because the old rusty parts come off, new stuff goes on, commonly touched areas, um, the rust falls off. So everything's fresh and disgusting right now. God. Wow. Did the needle bearings go everywhere? Um, yes, they did. Well, one of them fell over. I still don't think we'll... Yeah, this won't go back in anyway because we're changing drive staff lengths, so it doesn't matter. needle bearing hmm. maybe when the uncle rob shirts come out we can include a needle bearing for from uncle rob's u joint caps for as many shirt orders as there are needle bearings in the cap would you guys want needle bearings from uncle rob or some uh you know some rust particles we got plenty of those you know anything like that you throw it in the bag authentic uncle rob rust fleck right here could be yours <laughs> <laughs> Could be yours. Okay, now the front drive shaft. Oh, it's leaking. Cool. Need to find a receptacle for the leak. Okay. That's her job. Grabbing containers and other nonsense. Yeah. No, my clean floor. I'm trying not to take the crossover off anyway. To get to that, and this nice tile wastegate shining like a diamond in a goat's ass under here. But they're gonna be the same uh, 11 millimeter or 7 16 I believe. It's the crossover for that. Same thing. Hopefully, these ones are easier to get out because all the salt flies backwards. So, naturally, the back is the worst spot. Well, you know what I always say you're not working until you're bleeding. Guess I'm working now, courtesy of this here skid plate and uh, old ratchet wrench. She's uh, working on preparing the tools to get the crossover off. We're gonna have to do that. And I kind of screwed ourselves because we're gonna have to take the downpipe off. I'm gonna have to move that, lower everything back down. What was that? Just like take a, like a wire grill cleaner. You like rub it on the rusty sh <laughs> You know, it, like cleans all the charge off the grill. I feel like you could do that under here. The whole truck would be gone. It's not all rest. Can't raise a pile of dirt. <laughs> but it doesn't like 
that. You know, you're probably right. Maybe we'll get some brushes and you can do that tomorrow. <laughs> you're an official employee now. That could be your job. Uncle Rob rust removal. What the f Is it the wrong way? It shouldn't be. Check it, make sure you're not loosening it or that you're not tightening it. Just spin That's... it. Put the trigger and spin it. Yeah, you're tightening it. What the f but yeah. Well, don't put it in there. What? That should be tightening it because this is the forward one, right? I'm not even tightening it. Just look at the way the socket spins. Oh, uh, uh. Oops. Well, you lost it. Cool. It's fine. We'll find it. <laughs> nice. All right, two more. Oh, thanks. That's my, that's what I always I always wanted. One of those. Yeah. Uh, you like nuts. You like nuts. <laughs> Insert dirty joke. <laughs> Keep going. There you go. We're either going to have to get up on a ladder and get that down pipe off or put the whole thing down and do it that way. That's annoying. Yeah, I know. I was going to do that. That's why I opened the hood before we put it up. Then well, I forgot. Why don't you just lower it a little bit? And climb up there. Well, I mean, the ladder and just put it down. Yeah, <laughs> got to remove the safety pole here. You mean move the bucket? Huh? Yeah, you can move the bucket. Just don't kick it. Get it? Kick the bucket. Yeah. Uh huh. So it's on the locks now. We need to lift it up. So it's not on the locks. Okay, so it's not now. Now pull it. Press that. Do what? Press the rod down so hmm. you have to press hard yeah that's hydraulic pressure you're releasing all right now let's get this down pipe off are you gonna set anything on the battery 716 no i'm not and i glued these caps over it i glued the caps over it so we can put stuff on it now is that the one with the holes in it yeah it is yeah, another previous mishap. If you haven't seen the other Uncle Rob videos, I encourage you to go watch them because I set an ECU down on the battery and it about exploded. There, down there. Yeah, um, that's 7 16th. You wanna buzz that off real quick? She can do all the easy stuff. I'll save my F-bombs for the hard things where the rust is. Did you get it? Did what? I get it? Did I move it? What, the impact? Yeah. Did you leave it under there? Excess power batteries. Great ECU fryers if you set stuff on them that they're not supposed to. You don't need to take it the whole way off. You can just do it like loosen it. Yeah, then it should, the V-band should come off. What? Nothing. Why are you smiling? Because I was expecting you to just full bore, spin that off and then lose it because I've done that before. Well, suck it. <laughs> well, there's the clamp. Yes. You're learning. Always thread the bolt back on before you lose it. Pro tip. You want to take the headlight out and put it back in? Fuck you. <laughs> How? It requires some twisting. Yeah, well, I don't want to do it. Why doesn't it just drop under? Can Be it not do that? No. Because the guy who made it sucks. Oh, is that Adrian or is it you? It's me. Oh. <laughs> Oops. It's kind of like a corkscrew. You just kind of got to like... And I was supposed to know that? I was going to guide you through it, but you gave up. I didn't even finish weld this freaking downpipe and that's hilarious because it barely leaks. I didn't finish weld it because I didn't really like the way it was because it was hard to take in and out. I wanted to, you know, pull the inner fender, get the air ride, you know, the ride height sensor out of there and do it with some science instead of just making it work on the floor with jack stands because I was irritated and wanted to get it done and made it look like this. Huh. 
I guess I need the extension. Where did you put it? I'm stupid. Mm. That is, that ain't it, Chief? <laughs> you picked it up in broad daylight and you lost it. You lost my extension. Ah, uh, yeah. We need to clean that toolbox and actually start using it. Yeah. Yeah. Big shout out to Garrett Fine. I think is his name. He just gave me that toolbox. He said it was in his way, and he got a better one. So I was like, yeah, I'll take it. Uncle Rob really is the people's build, if you think about it. And I kind of feel like weird about taking free stuff from people sometimes. But, oh, let's we'll tune back in on this action here. I'll finish my story in a second. God damn it, this one's too long. It's too long? Yeah. Is I felt weird about taking free parts for this thing from people that just had them sitting around and offered to, you know, send them to me. Just like that, or not those fans, but someone sent me fans. Um, Uno Memento Football Monkey You learned that too what? To bang it on the ground if it gets stuck in there You never taught me that I thought I did No you didn't I showed you the other day I don't remember that I, had, I was doing the, the bottom hydraulic thing on there And the little plug was stuck on the Allen And I threw it on the ground are you sure that wasn't Mike? No, it was you. Why would I need to teach Mike that? I don't know. <laughs> well, what I was saying is, the guy's name was uh, Brian Culpepper. He gave me the gas tank that we needed for this thing. And I was like, man, I don't know how I feel about taking free stuff from people. I don't, it's like, it seems kind of weird because like I don't need it. I can find stuff myself, but people want to give it to me. He said, man, it's good to allow people to do that because it helps them feel involved. Because he said, a guy like me, you know, I don't have time to do a bunch of this stuff myself. So this is how I contribute and feel involved. And he's like, I think you should let people do it. So I thought, you know what? You're right. That is true. So even though it feels kind of weird for me to take free stuff, if someone has something and they want it to be a part of Uncle Rob, I want to do it. Are you having fun? No, help. <laughs> There's like something on there. Oh, oh it's just bound up. That, yeah. yeah, that'll come off. We can pick it back up and bang on it and it'll fall off. Oh, cool. I was like, I swear to God, I got it off it. It feels like there was another one on there. Yeah, no, those V-bands, even if you take the bolt off, sometimes they're still tight and you gotta like tap them to get them to pop loose. Did you bang it? I did, but not hard enough. <laughs> I don't want to f*** anything up. Okay. You can bang it good. <laughs> oh my god, it's ruined. I'm kidding. I know. Where's the nut from this thing? On the ground still where I banged it. Oh. Yeah, we have to... We have to practice good nut discipline here. Well, let's put it, put it back in it, put it. Nope. But as soon as it comes out, then you do. Good nut discipline. <laughs> I feel like... Do you have good nut discipline? I feel like that's a shirt right there. Nut discipline. <laughs> yeah. Do you have good nut discipline? No, he nuts on everything. He nuts on everything all the time. Um, okay, now we get the front drive shaft the rest of out. I think I got that on film. <laughs> I hope you don't. <laughs> Pretty sure I did. Just like that golf cart at Yellow Belly. <laughs> We're gonna try to get this out without losing any needle bearings. It was definitely not as difficult as the back one. There's always a little rubber seal on there. That'll give you a fight. And you gotta pull these off. Mm. <laughs> this thing has a lot of skid plates on it. SLT GMC standard, because I think that's like a Z71 thing on the Chevys, but I don't know if this is some kind of off-road package or not. Any of you RPO code nerds, 
Uh, chime in in the comments. Let me know why these have that. Mmm, yummy. It's like, feels weird. Oh no, he's gonna poop. He's gonna no! poop. He's gonna poop. <laughs> he's pooping right now. Oh no. <laughs> I just wanna die. I'm no, die. he's taking a dump in the diaper right now. <laughs> I'm gonna cry. This is not funny. Bro. There, he thinks he's pinching it off right now. <laughs> Look at him shaking. He's like, why is it still stuck to my butt? Oh, his diaper's falling down. It's so heavy. There's probably like 80 pounds of poop in there. Oh, I can smell it. God, no. No, it's falling down. It's all stuck to his butt. It's falling out. It's like a freaking soft taco with a hole in it. Oh my god, it's everywhere. Oh no. Oh no. Oh my god. No. No, don't sit on the floor. Don't do it. He just stamped the floor. Look at him here, get up. Get up. Let him sit there. Oh god, it smells awful. Oh man. Oh man, I'm glad you guys can't smell anything. This is way more interesting than anything we've done to this point. Oh, it's terrible. Oh, he just, oh, that freaking stamp on the floor is awful. We need to air this place out. I'm gonna move the Escalade's water pump so you don't get any poop on it. How about that? <laughs> wow. Well, there you have it, guys. Oh, he just sat on his leash. Oh, he needs a new leash. God, his chickens. Just, no, 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 you stay away from me. I'm taking this too so you don't also ruin that. He's not having a good time. Yeah, we have good footage, but he needs a new leash now. No! He sat on the leash. You, you talked to him, you messed with him, now he turd stamped his leash? He turd stamped like 82 <laughs> things while you were gone. Oh my god, where did everything go? Look, I moved his box so he didn't go in there and ruin that too. But look, stamp, 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 blob stamp, <laughs> right on the leash. And then he walked in it. You're so lucky, I love you. Stop videoing this. <laughs> okay, I guess I have to stop. Okay, so we're back next morning. We're gonna finish getting everything out of Uncle Rob. Um, all of Ruger's poop is cleaned up. And we have a solution to the background music issue. Ashton over there always said how he liked, I used the same song for all of my time lapses. So I was like, we could play some of that. It's Creative Commons. So I found a playlist for that. He's over there, he's happy, he's got his favorite music. And if those guys start to play their music, um, we'll turn that up and drown it out. So it'll work great. Next order of business on here, after Logan's finished meme farming and eating a first form protein bar, which we eat a lot of, by the way. What's Birthday your favorite? Cake. Birthday cake. Pretty good. Yeah. I'll, uh, I'll put a link for those in the comments. I actually eat a bunch of those. So anyway, the cross members got to come out. Question. We have two options here. We pull the cross member, tilt this down, fluid's gonna come out of here, or we drain it now. Why would we not drain it now? Okay, well, there's the answer. That is why I asked her. Because me, I would probably just let it drain out and then wrestle it out of there being heavier than it needs to be, but we'll also lose maybe, I don't know, a few pounds out of it, not having any fluid. Uh, I sprayed some PB blaster on the cross member bolts because these are going to suck these ones are double-sided it looks like there's another bracket that comes off of here so um, we're gonna need the big impact for that on these drain plugs if you see a square like this check this out see this square mm -hmm. you don't need a socket you just put the ratchet right in there i assumed that was the case because it was a square oh well you see she's smarter than I thought, but if none of you guys knew that, now you know. I think this whole format of me teaching her things, even if she's already assumed the right thing anyway, is beneficial because um, you guys learn more that way too. I have to be more explanatory and I can just put that on camera. Think you can get this out or do you want me to get it out? I'll try. Yeah, it's already good. You just pull. Oh, that wasn't that tight. 
Nice. Don't drop. Did you drop the cap into no, the? No, I didn't. Okay, good job. Oh, she got it. Well, we can slowly lower it down. Here, you can hold your hand there. I'll get you a rag. You didn't even get any on the hoodie. Good job. I know. I'm proud. <laughs> no dick-shaped oil stain. <laughs> Yeah, she's salty because one of her favorite Under Armour hoodies got oil on it during one of the other Uncle Rob videos. And um, I made fun of her because it kind of looked like a dick. That's what we do. We have to do these first, and those are grody. I believe those are 15s. You know, you have these like cases and you open them and sometimes they're upside down and then all your crap gets dumped everywhere. Not doing that anymore. Bottom, do not open. Flip it over. I've never actually done this before, I just got this idea right now, but this is going to save my stupid ass lots of headache reorganizing this thing from opening it the wrong way. And I will also write top. You're good. <laughs> I borrowed this thing from these guys, I still don't have any impacts yet. The vault I've had for, I don't know, six years seen better days but it doesn't really break things it does the job everybody's got Milwaukee's now I feel like that's probably what I'll end up with but you know who knows maybe I'll be an outlaw and go with some other brand if anybody out there is not on the Milwaukee train and swears that there's something out there that is just as good and costs less or better or maybe almost as good but costs way less I'm all ears because truth be told I'm not spending a bazillion dollars on a bazillion attachments for these things like some people do. I get what I need and that's it. Oh man, there's gonna be some rusticles out of here. Oh, yep, it's in my hair for sure. A bunch of dust on it. Yep, pro tip, throw it on the floor. Yeah, those threads are nice and reformed. Got to shove all that grit through there, getting that off. Um, now we got to go over there and get a train jack so we can get the cross member out. So we're just going to pick this up enough to get the um, trans mount off of the cross member so the cross member can hang free. Bracket thingy here for something to do with the fuel lines, I think. But it was double nutted under these cross member bolts, so knock those off real quick. Now we can get the actual cross member off. I'll start with these ones first because they're going to be harder. I usually just throw a uh, adjustable wrench on one side and the impact on the other. Yeah, is it hot? Mm -hmm. No, not really. Yeah, these are important. My Candyman shirt, which you can get at stapletonautoworks.com. Shameless plug. Okay. Here is the other nut. You know why I really like this spot? Because it has a door. Because we can take this broom and just... Gone. I don't know if you guys noticed, but the bolt side was coming through this way on the other side. Like, two go this way and two go that way from the factory. I wouldn't have anticipated that. You would think they both go the same way. Kind of like with deadlifting, how you like do like your reverse grips. If maybe, I mean the clamp load shouldn't matter. I think they just turned that side around because of that bracket that they needed to use the existing studs to bolt something to. Yeah, that's weird. That's my thought because I swear, the first time I did the Escalade, they all went the same way because I always put it back the way it came. Practice good nut discipline. Nice dirty fingers. Mm -hmm. Authentically dirty. You know what's funny is all those like car girls on YouTube that work on their own cars. Your hand just got dirtier than most of theirs ever would. <laughs> and this cross member is about to drop out. It's pretty loose. I think it should come out pretty easy, but it's still in there enough to stay in there. Should just come right out. I made a chromoly tubular cross member for the Escalade. I don't think we're gonna do that here because I'm gonna show you guys how you're gonna do it at home when you do this. Um, that'll be in a separate video, but just to give you a quick rundown, basically what'll happen here is the 4L80 mounting points are a little bit farther back. It's like an inch and a half or something stupid. So what you do 
is you cut this here, cut this here, you bolt everything back in where it goes. Bolt this side in, bolt that side in, bolt this to the trans mount. And it's gonna be back a little bit farther. And then you grind the sides down a little bit enough that you can slide an eighth inch piece of plate steel in there, tag it in place, and then you know cut it so it's the right size. So essentially, you cut this out, put some plates in just so you can slide it back a little bit. I know if you don't have a good imagination, that'll be hard for you to picture, but that'll be all in the process of this um, in a future video. So you're gonna wanna make sure you subscribe so you don't miss the nitty gritty like that. Buzz this thing off here, that's pretty easy. Then we can get to the transfer case bolts. So we're gonna put some work in for a little bit. I went ahead and sprayed some BB blaster on those bolts there, which I should have done yesterday, but I didn't because I'm stupid. Uh, it'll help, even though it's not gonna have much time to sit on there, it'll help once it starts turning. As far as getting off, it'll get into threads and just make it easier that way. Um, we got a stubby and a regular 15 mil ratchet wrench. I've found that a stubby is super, super useful for the very top one because um, you don't have much room between the floor and there. I urge you to take my advice very, very seriously when it comes to transmission and transfer case removal on one of these things because I have done it many, many times on the floor uh, by myself under a time crunch. So I got this system done really well. Let's get these things out. Bucket. We need the bucket. Should have known that was gonna happen. Yeah, kind of forgot. When I do the S blade, I have a drain pan bolt, just like this one does. Oh wow! I didn't even notice. We should have drained the fluid in the transmission first, because the fluid from the transmission um, has an access path to the center unit uh, adapter thingy. That's why it'll drip whenever you crack that loose. I'm not gonna take that one completely off. We're just gonna leave it all the way out, and then take that body bottom one almost all the way out too and push it back on the studs and just let it drip for a little bit while we unplug and disconnect anything that's attached to the transfer case. So we got everything unplugged, disconnected from the transfer case. Um, there's a couple plugs on there. We'll show them in better detail once we pull it out so you can see it. Uh, lower the lift a little bit because the tranny jack didn't go high enough to even reach the transmission pan, which I'm thankful for that this lift goes really, really high because the lifts over there I could do the trans and the Escalade and take that thing and jam the thing up into the freaking tunnel. So this thing goes significantly higher than any lift I've ever used. And I love that about it. We have reached a decision making point. A drain plug on the 4060 pan. Someone had tried to do it before and it's just been destroyed. As soon as I put something on there, it just spun right off. We're just gonna drill a hole in it with no remorse. Suck it. You know, I didn't even check to see if that was really aligned with the hole first, but I was just so in the zone, like, I'm gonna draw a hole in this thing, I don't care what happens. I just, just got lucky. Pro tip, feel free to drill a hole in anything that you wanna drain quickly, but don't come to me crying whenever it doesn't hold any fluid when you try to fill it back up, because it won't. Imagine that. Yeah, you can't see, but Logan just made some stupid face because of my terrible joke. <laughs> so, while this is dripping, uh, we put it down and disconnected the battery because I should have done that first But I wanted to make sure we did that before pulling the starter out to get the flex plate bolts because you bop the back of the starter on the frame and It goes bzzzed, almost like uh, when I set the ECU on the battery mm -hmm. Yeah, the battery has a lead that goes right to the starter. So if that touches something and it grounds off it does the same thing Ask me how I know the transmission is still dripping so oriented this here pole jack to split the difference between the slats so it doesn't get any fluid on the pole jack, but it still gets into the receptacle. Hold this piece up right here real quick. Normally I put it back we can and, I, the, and I turn it. We can tilt this up and get the fret come down. That's what needs to happen, but I can't, I can't have a hand here and two hands here. I need to have a handle on the tail shaft. Got it. Go ahead. Oh, so we're gonna switch hands. Okay. I'm holding a lot of weight here. Okay. You got it. 
No, dude, this thing is. That thing is heavy. This is, the, is this not the HD one? No. The other one's heavier, isn't it? No, the, the other one's not that heavy. What? Swear to God, that's the heaviest transfer case I've ever moved. That's heavy and cumbersome, but the real kicker is this charcoal box right here. It keeps you from turning it, so you have to dip it under the transmission. Damn, you lifted it straight up like that on the pan? I drilled a hole in the pan. <laughs> you sure did, didn't you? It's a, that's a junk transmission. I don't know what I'm spending in <laughs> Ashley was all sad. No, the, the drain bolt was stripped out, so you're like, you know what? Gator don't play no shit. <laughs> just gonna roll a hole. Oh my god, it's Catman. Oh my goodness. And so now the transfer case is off. We lowered it back down. Um, it's just hanging now because we want all the room we can have. Shifter cable, the range selector, and all the random things that are kind of clipped on up here. Make sure that's all disconnected. On a scale of one to I'm not touching this. How yucky is that? I've already touched it. It's pretty gross though. Stuff. Yeah, I was just kind of thinking this kind of is a lot better than like, you know, wiping a dog's ass <laughs> and sticking to fur is not cool. Yeah. Well, my bad for asking bad questions. She will touch anything. Apparently. Wow, all those plugs are freaking tight as hell. Well guys, I did a bad. I dropped the screwdriver into the tray of transmission fluid. Just picked it up and bought daylight and dropped it in there. And now I have to get it out. I was gonna do it, but I feel like people will get an odd sense of satisfaction watching me stick my hand in there because it's just not something you want to do. So here we go. Uh, where is it? No. I know there are easier ways to do this, like with pliers or something, but you know, for the cinema, I ruined my day. So my hand is gonna smell like this all day. Hey Baylor, suck it. If I haven't learned anything here, it's that that needs to go away and just replace it with a piece of cardboard because it's just such a slow drip now that we don't need a giant bucket full of volatile fluid. Um, right in dropping zone. Okay, so I was struggling with the connectors on the range selector and Super Tuner Tanner comes in here with a tidbit of information you guys should know. They're like glued in in a way and you have to heat them up and then pull, the, pull them out. How do you heat them without melting them? I always use like a, like a just electric heat gun. We have one here somewhere. So don't get crazy and melt it like I probably would? Yeah. I like, to, I like to melt stuff. What? What are you looking at, cat man? Nothing. When's your car gonna be ready for Yellow Belly again? This weekend. You going? Probably. All right, better be there. We're trying our best to be there. There you go. So this is how you heat it without ruining it, apparently. Oh, there you're right. How do you know when that glue is ready to go? You just keep messing with it, keep playing with it. So like, I'll heat it for a minute and then try and then if it doesn't want to come, then I'll put more heat on it. Huh. When did they stop doing that? I have no idea. I just know, I, it's always been a thing on the 4L60. I know that. I don't know, I don't know if it is on the 4L80s. I'm gonna get this stuff off the side of the transmission um, and get everything disconnected from it. Got some more stuff out of the way. Everything on the side of the transmission is off and the starter is out of the way. I cut out and pulled out the remnants of the original transmission lines because it's gonna make our lives easier. And we're pulling the skid plate now just to uh, to bar the motor over. To do the converter bolts, which is the second to last step to yanking this thing out. Pretty freaking close now. <sighs> These bolts have factory Loctite on them, so they're gonna be kind of tough to get out the entire time you're working on them. Well, it's a good thing there's only three. If you have the finger strength, my favorite unit for convertibles is a ratchet wrench. Sometimes it's the only method depending on packaging, but oh. these ones I busted with a ratchet. I'll get them off with a ratchet wrench. You having fun? No. It's busy, we all. Damn, I love converter bolts. Converter bolts are my favorite. Thumbs up if you love converter bolts as much as we do. Basically what that means is 
thumbs up if you freaking hate doing convertibles also. I can do the turning if you need me to. I can do it. Nope, she's not a quitter. She doesn't want my help. Keep going. Tools have feelings too. Yeah, f cool. And stupid hose was in the way. It's a lot easier now. The key is to have tension on the breaker bar before I start turning. Because if you're just holding it and I turn it, enough slack to catch the ratchet is gonna be way out of my window of where I need to be here. So if the tension's already there, then it doesn't move. Does that make sense? Does that make sense, guys? Good. I feel like I'm door of the explorer right now talking to nobody. Good job. <laughs> Oh, that show used to piss me off so much when I was a little kid. I was like, kid. this dumb bitch isn't listening to me. <laughs> yeah, I'm just like, Dora, there's a, a freaking sidewalk. You don't have to use it. Just go around the bush. <laughs> what was it like Crazy Steve and Drake and Josh where he was making was like, just go around it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just go around the freaking bush. <laughs> I missed that show. That, even Drake and Josh has many references used in here. Mm -hmm. You notice that? Mm. Like, I don't know. Take it easy, man. Yeah, exactly. Me and Little Daughter was like, whoa, just take it easy, man. And another, another one of my favorite ones is, that is not my job. Do you remember that one? Yeah. The movie theater lady? Yeah. That is not my job. And then I they start. That every time a customer comes in and no one's in there, I'm just like, hmm, not my job. What, when a customer walks in there? Yeah. And then I have to go on a like, trek to find someone. Yeah. Like, where the hell is everybody? Well, next time a customer walks in, you can just be like, that is not my job, and put your headphones back in. <laughs> You'll be like, that, that blonde bitch in the front desk is a terrible receptionist. I'm like, well, sir, she doesn't work here. Yeah, I'm not getting paid for it, so there's only so many times I can go find someone for you before I'm fucking it and not doing it anymore. Yeah. All the converter bolts are out now so we can move on to the bell housing bolts. I like having the camera on this tilty thing because I could just be like super serious. What are your thoughts on global warming? Dramatic effects. It just like pans <laughs> over. Yes. I feel like this is the office. I wish you could like spin it really fast without the GoPro flying. Well, the magic man. Magic man. <laughs> no, you see me? No, you don't. I'm a 10 mil socket. <laughs> Some of you OGs may remember way back the first time Uncle Rob, first couple times Uncle Rob ever appeared on a channel, um, working on it in Cooper's backyard and we were trying to turbo it in like four days and it didn't work at all. Uh, one of the exhaust manifold bolts was broken and Cooper uh, MIG welded a nut to it to get it out while I was out getting parts. Well, that ended up in some bin, which ended up in some box, which ended up in some bin, which ended up back here, and that hole in the transmission, uh, Logan was like, does he, do you need me to do anything? I said, yeah, can you find something to plug that hole? I'm tired of it dripping, because this has been dripping for all day. So she jams this bolt in there, it stops the dripping. Cooper, it's your bolt. Lives to solve another problem. Well, I guess first it created a problem. Um, I farted. <laughs> now it solves the problem. I was about to call you out. I yep. didn't know if you were gonna announce it. No, I, I have to. I fart a lot. <laughs> it's just part of being a gym bro. Gym bro, if you wanna call it. You eat a lot of protein, you fart a lot. How many times do I fart a day? A lot. Sometimes I contemplate asking you if you shit yourself because it sounds like it. <laughs> Nope, that has not happened. But I do fart a lot. I tell her when I fart. And I'll tell you guys when I fart too, because we all fart. I encourage you guys to go fart in front of hot women. It works. <laughs> and we gotta get the tranny jack under there to uh, support it so we can get the rest of these bolts out. I already did the top couple, because they're mofos and I hate them. And I would have started yelling at the camera and you guys don't deserve that. Because GM likes to be annoying and bolt every little bracket and everything on top of the very top bell housing bolts of the extra bolt. So to do the top two bolts, you have to take four nuts off. It's a pain. You guys know my pain if you've done it before. 
Yeah, I'm gonna need a pry bar probably. That's how they are sometimes. If it's never come off before, it's probably, probably gonna be a little stuck on there. Let's try to get some of its own weight on our side. Let's raise a PB blaster up in there too. Try to work that seal away a little bit. Sometimes they suck, sometimes they don't. This one's gonna suck. I can see it's working because then when I spray it up at the top, I'm watching it come out of the crack between the block and the bell housing somewhere else. So it's getting in there doing stuff. God damn. <laughs> I'm literally picking up the whole engine and transmission with this. Is there enough room between the block and the bell housing to get something in there? Right here? Yeah. Yeah. We could hammer the thing in there. I'll get one. We don't want to lose our cigar. Oh. Dang. What? Did you get it? Um, I made the other screwdriver fall out, but I made it move more. Oh. Well, it was moving more than it did its job. Here, let me wiggle the back while you do that. Oh. You did it. That actually happened, guys. She just jumped in there and just made it happen. All right, now we're gonna get the other side. Here, take this and put it in right here, in the bottom. Mm -hmm. Now we'll pull it this way. That'll be our lever of, there we go. See, we got it off now, you can let go. Okay. Now we just gotta not do that, not lower it that fast. Back it away. Oh, we still got the connector right here. Okay, well, that's off. So, 13 mil ratchet wrench that I lost before. You know, there are grown men who are scared to get in there with a pry bar with a transmission dangling above their head, but you know, she just went in there and just did it. Maybe she's not aware of the risks, but. I don't know. I'm pretty aware because you kind of like threw some like a wrench or some at my foot. I didn't throw I feel like it. this would hurt a lot worse. Yeah, no, this is lose your foot. Yeah. But we're trying to keep our eyes. That's why we wear these Pit Viper protective eyeglasses. <laughs> <laughs> I try to make that as cheesy as I can. But no, seriously, <laughs> every every Pit Viper sunglasses, clear or tinted, is like NCZ87 certified. So they're legitimately safety glasses. And these clear ones are freaking awesome for in here. Insert stupid girl question. What's your, well, okay, let's play this out. What's your stupid girl question? Would you still love me if I had one eye? Yeah. Cool. Cause they can put pretty dang good glass eyes in people, just not dogs. Cool. So they'd be able to make you look just fine. <laughs> <laughs> You're supposed to be like, wow, where can I get them? PitVipersunglasses.com, type in Stapleton42 and save 10% or something like that. Honestly, I don't really make any money from it. I'm just telling you guys because you can save some money on these things and not get stuff in your eyes. Okay, let's wheel this thing out of here and be done because this was our objective for the day and now we did it. And now I'm gonna go straight to the computer and start editing this video covered in crap. So. You guys are getting a glimpse into the what the YouTube grind is all about. I mean, we've been working on this for a day and a half, and that's uh, just to get the footage. With this stuff, we have to work in order to work. Like we have to bust our ass working on stuff, film it, which takes makes everything take longer, and then edit and produce all of it after the fact. It's a lot of work. I don't think people really think about that, but I wouldn't be wouldn't want to be doing anything else. That's for sure. Next thing on the agenda is get the HD2 shift kit installed in the 4L80 and clean that off. Maybe we'll paint it, maybe we won't. Transfer case, gotta clean that off, go through it, put new seals inside outside of that, um, which I picked up the other day. That footage will be in there too, going to pick it up. This is like your office now. Yep. You got a dog under your desk. Yep. He's chilling. Ruger's recovering well. The bruising has gone down. <laughs> His diaper's coming off. Oh no. It's okay. I forgot I forgot about the whole diaper saga. 
but yeah the shirt i'm wearing is the Candyman shirt on the website uh, staplesandautoworks.com head over there link is in the description get yourself a shirt we got these Candyman ones and the newest one is probably my favorite right now is styled after the gm goodwrench uh, service plus staples and auto works suck it hats are on the way um and they're not these ones they're new ones of those too so stay tuned big things we're uh, really really ramping it up we got to make sure that she has stuff to do all day <laughs> maybe we'll even do a one-eyed ruger shirt he just looked at me like what <laughs> <laughs> he's chilling oh yeah if you uh if you do order a shirt um there's a tip function on the website that goes straight to her i don't keep any of that she's completely independent thanks what nothing <laughs> <laughs> i'm just trying to help without helping good boy